you said, stick by me, you'll be your guiding hand. But don't ask me what I think of you, I might not give the answer that you want me to. Howdy, I'm Joe, and this is my show, Joe's Rides. In these videos, myself and my glamorous assistant, Caden, will show you what we get up to in my workshop in town, repairing mostly Land Rovers, along with a few classic cars, hot rods, American cars, all sorts. We'll also do some videos from my workshops at home, where you'll see some of my projects, more cars, bikes, hot rods, odds and sods, you name it. So if you like petrol, oil, dirt and beer, then tune in. If you're a bit woke, left wing, if you believe in climate change, or you're vegan, then fuck off! <coughs> Okay, welcome to another edition of Joe's Rides. Today we're here at my workshops at home. We're ploughing on into October, but the sun's still out. Sunny Bedfordshire. So uh, today I'm going to talk uh, to you a little bit about the car I'm sitting on, uh, and also another one of the projects in the shed. Um, but we'll talk about this one first. Uh, this is my Ford 1929 Model A five window coupe. Um, this car began with the engine like a lot of my projects have. So the engine we've put in here is a 1936 Ford flathead V8 engine. I could be wrong on the year but I think that's what it is. Um, that came to me via a friend. Um, it was in a sorry state. Um, he asked me if I wanted it. At the time I didn't. Um, but after a few days I thought, oh, you know what, I'll go and buy it. So I got it, it wasn't a lot of money, um, it didn't look very nice, and I thought, you know, I'll just flip it on, on eBay or something like that. But I thought about it, and I thought, well, you know, I'd like to do a traditional hot rod like they did back in the day. So that's where this journey began. Um, so I then went and sourced the car. Um, when I first got the car, uh, it looked a million dollars. Uh, but unfortunately, um, it had been bodged up in the States, and... Uh, an unfortunate guy in the UK had bought it. Uh, he didn't have it appraised and then realised he'd bought a pup really. Uh, so I got the car. Um, like I say, it looked great, but it was full of fiberglass. All the wings were bodged up, the running boards were bodged up. Uh, had it have been a nice original car, I wouldn't have considered making it into a hot rod. Um, but because it was so bad, then I, I deemed it okay. So uh, then, yeah, we rebuilt the engine. Uh, it didn't really need any machine work, but it had all fresh piston rings, fresh bearings, big ends, main bearings, obviously all new gaskets, seals, new water pumps, etc, etc, and it, uh, it runs really well for it. Um, we split the front wishbones to clear the sump, which is uh, one of the jobs you do when you put a V8 into a Model A. And I've tried to keep everything looking really old, even the paintwork. I painted it in cellulose paint. I didn't want it too sort of shiny. Um, it's all dressed up like it would have been done in the day, I think. No Phillips screws. Um, we've got the brakes off a 1949 Ford truck on the front, which we've adapted to fit. Um, and we're still using rod brakes on the rear. Um, I've got a Land Rover brake master cylinder mounted underneath on a pivot. When you press the brake pedal, it operates the master cylinder for hydraulic brakes on the front and pulls the rods on the rear. Uh, it stops. It stops as, as much as you'd expect for a, for a hundred year old car or getting on for that old anyway. Um, fitted 16 inch wire wheels. Tried to do some period looking tyres. Coming on round the back here. There's not a great deal to see. We've got the spare wheel mounted on there still. Single rear light. This vinyl top, I think, uh, is original. Someone did tell me that the, uh, the more deluxe models, perhaps, had this fitted. I don't know. I don't claim to, to know a lot about mod days. But I do know that it's the, uh, it's the, it's the very same or very similar material uh, that I have on uh, my 1924 Ford Model 2. Um, so it leads me to believe that it, it, it may well be period. Um, on, the, uh, on the back axle, 
uh, it's still got its original uh, Ford Model A axle, which I put a higher ratio crown wheel and pinion in to uh, improve the, 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 the top speed effectively. It just takes some revs off the engine. Um, it did have uh, a torque tube set up uh, with the original gearbox. Um, it's actually got a, a 1949 truck gearbox, same as the front brakes, same from the same vehicle. That's a four speed crash box. Um, and we fitted uh, what they call an open drive uh, conversion to the rear axle to do away with the torque tube and then run a conventional prop shaft, which is uh, from memory uh, a little bit of uh, Ford truck and a little bit of Land Rover again. Land Rover parts seem to creep into a lot of my projects because uh, Land Rovers is what I do for a business, so I've got stores full of bits and bobs and sometimes I look at them and think, you know what, that should solve that problem on whatever it is I'm building at the time. Um, we also split the rear wishbones, uh, moved those out to the, uh, to the to the chassis and fitted some uh, modern shop absorbers underneath, but uh, you can't see them. Don't like modern, don't want modern on this car. Um, I think the uh, exhaust manifolds are off a Ford Pilot. Um, only that someone told me that's what they're off. I don't know that to be the uh, to be the case, um, but maybe it is. Uh, they didn't lend themselves to this conversion, so I had to take the exhaust up and underneath the chassis rail. But it wasn't a big deal. Um, I probably could have got some manifolds which would have made that job easier, but. Uh, you work with what you've got sometimes. Now there's a little bit of a problem with the car at the moment. The car drives fine. Well, let's just show you inside. So inside, we're all uh, we're all still pretty stock. We've got the original seats, or at least I believe them to be original. Ever so comfy. Um, not interested in modern car seats uh, in this particular application. Um, made some floors out of plywood. The original floors would have been plywood, but obviously there's a lot of uh, changes with the different gearbox and different pedals that I've had to use uh, and also use some uh, old American license plates <laughs> from what it's worth. So yeah the car uh, has developed a problem, it's not a problem that's stopping me from using it, um, it's a, a little bit of annoyance but it could, uh, could progress into something more sinister. So um, going back to the summer um, I was at a Santa Pod and uh, I can't remember which day, whether it was a Saturday or Sunday. Uh, the car was parked up, obviously I don't have a bonnet on the car, and the heavens opened, uh, big time. Um, later on in the day, I went to move the car and it, it was making a noise, a high pitched whistling noise. Um, and there was a lot of water sitting up here in the air filter, obviously the air filter had all got all wet. Um, and as the weekend went by and the sun came back out, uh, and everything dried off, the noise stopped uh, and I drove back home uh, with no noise, it, it was fine. So I put it down to the fact that maybe it was water getting drawn into the, uh, into the intake there somehow. Um, then fast forward um, a month or so, the noise came back uh, with a vengeance and the car now still has this noise, which is this high pitch whistling, just like a, a, a kettle boiling really. Um, so uh, I thought, well, it's, it's not the rain, um, there's something else going on. Uh, and it sounds very much like uh, an air leak uh, on the intake. So I have squirted all around the inlet manifold and the carburetor uh, with penetrating fluid, like WD-40, um, because if you do that, uh, it can do two things. You can see bubbles where it's being drawn into, uh, into where it shouldn't be. Well, the other thing is, is sometimes you'll hear the engine note pick up uh, as the engine burns that penetrating fluid as a fuel. So you can spray around and sometimes find out where you've got this leak. So I've done all that uh, and I can't find it until uh, this morning where I was running the engine and uh, using the stethoscope and listening, I found that the noise is coming from this gasket between the carburetor base and the main body. Um, so I was going to do a video today of taking the carburetor off and uh, fixing that air leak, but the more I look at it, um, I'm going to need to take uh, all of the carburetor apart to do that. Uh, this top gasket's sweaty. Um, the carburetor itself has been leaking some uh, 
some petrol slightly. So I think what I'm going to do is not do that. I'm going to uh, go get myself a, a gasket kit, which will hopefully be repairable. It's a Ford carburetor, and um, then we can then we can take it all apart, and I'll be confident that I'll have the uh, parts to be able to put it back together, as opposed to uh, today taking it all apart. And it's a sunny day, you know, so we we might me and Caden might well go for a, for a last hurrah before winter comes and, and, and go out and give it a ride. And then when we put it to bed uh, for the winter, then I'll, I'll pull that carb off and by then I'll have the gasket sets and uh, we can do the job properly. So I'll, um, I'll start this up so you can hear this noise and then we'll come back to it in another video uh, to see if we've cured it. So hold on there. Hopefully you'll hear this above the noise of the open headers. talk on the uh, Model A. I'll take you in one of the workshops here at home now and show you what we're up to in here. So this is a uh, early Mark III Ford Transit, um, mid 80s, 86 I think from memory. Um, I bought this van in from Malta of all places, uh, get out to Malta a few times a year for the drag racing scene there. Um, in actual fact we're out to Malta uh, next next month so we'll, we'll do a video of going out to Malta and uh, show you the drag racing scene out there so uh, um, yeah one of the times I was out there I uh, I've now got to know a, a few people there locals and uh, uh, a guy mentioned this Mark III Transit that has uh, been in a shed for some time and not being used so I went and had a look at it and um, it looked pretty good um, like they do uh, until I got into I got it home and sort of got into it and uh, started finding the rust that all transits do have um, I put a couple of new front wings on that's part of the course of one of these really the uh, the metalwork underneath the wings all here this was all rotted away and the front cross member was rotten so that's all been repaired um, this is all just uh, temporary masking uh, with newspaper etc um, I've painted all the engine bays so I'm just trying to keep some of the uh, some of the, the dust out of there because at the moment we're we're uh, doing the bodywork. So um, what else have we done? The uh, the steps were rotten, so I've repaired those. Um, we're pretty much uh, a bare shell now. The only thing left in the van is uh, is the windscreen and the and the dashboard. Um, We'll go around the side here. Excuse me, Caden. So here is Caden. Say hello, Caden. Hi. Hello, Caden. Um, Caden's been helping me out. Uh, Caden was coming up on Saturday mornings up here to help me here at home. Um, he's uh, always fancy working on, on cars and things, so a few years ago, his mum asked me if uh, he could help me out, help me out at weekends, and uh, that was six years ago, apparently. So that's, that's flown by. Uh, I do remember when Caden first started coming up here; he was uh, about the same height as me. Uh, and then one weekend, I went away, and uh, he come back, and now he's thirteen foot tall. Just happened overnight. So Caden uh, is uh, is now taking driving lessons, and he's just bought his first car, which is a Vauxhall Corsa. Uh, so we might do a video down at the other workshop in town. Uh, maybe we'll give that a service or something. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll see. We'll see. So just today, we've got this uh, this side all finished. So where I hope to be is to, um, hope to get this maybe in primer uh, next month. By next month, anyway, we'll use a, a, a two-pack primer. Uh, and then there'll be some time, obviously, uh, flattening that down before we actually paint it. Um, I was just thinking, Kay, we could do a video of me um, towing your course out of the dish, ditch after you crashed it. That'd be interesting. 
when you come home from the pub on a Saturday night with all your mates. And then we could do a video of putting new, new headlights in it, new bumper, straightening the roof out where you rolled it. That'll make some writing. So yeah, I digress. This side's, this side's now all done. Uh, steps, the wing, etc., etc. Um, we're going to uh, we're going to put a uh, Ford Cosworth V6 24 valve BOA engine in here. Sorry, it's tight in here. I'll show you the engine. This is something Caden spent some time cleaning up, um, and we're going to put. Uh, uh, an automatic gearbox on the back of that. Not as sporty as a manual, I understand, but it's just gonna make the van a nice, usable, drivable bit of kit. Uh, also gonna uh, fit some nitrous on there, like you do. Oh, that, by the way, that's a uh, flat six uh, Rolls-Royce Aero engine. Uh, built up a stand to to run that on. We'll do something with that one day. Maybe get it running uh, one Saturday morning and show you show you guys. Okay, um, I'll lift the van up now and uh, show you what we've been doing. So, uh, as I said, underneath is, is pretty much done now. Um, we place the, uh, place the discs. Um, I've found a power steering rack off a later transit. I don't know what transit it's off. Um, but I've fitted it and it's and it's on there. I had some trouble finding some trackled ends um, that suited the tapers in the van itself and the threads on the rack. But it's on there, uh, so we'll see what happens when we uh, try and hook it up with the pump on the engine. I think it's all gonna work. I don't know if you can get underneath here, Caden, but... Um, so the tank's been out. Um, I've fitted this. Sorry, this van was uh, a diesel initially. Um, we didn't have. No, I'm lying. I've got that wrong. Uh, this van originally had a Pinto engine in it, so it didn't have a return line. Uh, diesel one would have had a return line. We need a return line uh, for the fuel injection system on the BLA Cosworth engine. So we've taken the tank down, pressure washed the tank out, and. Um, fitted a return line in there, that's gone back up. Uh, and yeah, all the welding, everything you needed doing underneath has been done. Um, the other weekend I put a new uh, pinion seal in the, in the diff. Uh, and we've stone chipped the underside and I've wax oiled all inside the cavities. Um, interestingly, um, it was a few weeks ago, I was having a shit day at work. Um, had a, a trying job on a customer's Land Rover, which I, uh, managed to finish on a Friday afternoon and felt really good about it uh, and then managed to damage the bodywork on the car. So I came home, um, I was in a bad mood and I felt like just sitting down and drinking beer but I thought no I can't do that, I better do something and then I'll sit down and drink beer, drown my sorrows. Uh, so I thought I'd come in here and um, get this uh, this gun that we use for wax oiling which I uh, screw onto one of these litre containers and I took the litre container into the house and put the container of wax oil on the auger to heat it up to make it thin so it flows and it comes out of the gun bar. Uh, so I did that, it was red hot, the wax oil was, and I brought it in here and screwed it on the gun and uh, pressed the trigger and the, um, the container just blew up. So there was red hot wax oil everywhere, all over me, dripping all over me. It's all up the wheels over the, it's up the wheels all over the walls. It was all over the floor. It was just everywhere, and uh, that was the best I could do at cleaning it up before it went off. So yeah, that went a great day. So yeah, we're good under here. Um, primer next. Uh, got some back doors to go and pick up. Very difficult to find good back doors for Mark III Transits. Um, these the ones that were on the van weren't particularly rotten. Uh, they were rusty. They, they weren't terrible but I had some really big, awkward dents to deal with around the windows. So I sort of thought uh, I'll go looking for a, a better pair and I found some, uh, which uh, are all the way over to Norfolk. So I've got a best part of a 220 mile, uh, 20 mile round journey to go and get those. Um, but we're gonna stop in Kings Lynn on the way uh, because 
was a motorbike I might purchase. So we might make a video of going to get the doors and picking up this motorbike on the way. So, uh, right, we'll drop it down now. I think that's about it on the transit for now. We'll carry on uh, sanding down and uh, try and get this in primer uh, fairly soon. Uh, and we'll be back for another video soon. Okay, so just uh, talking about the disaster I had with the wax all tin exploding and sending wax all, all up the walls and, and everywhere. Uh, reminded me of uh, wax all, all over this, this number plate and the story behind that number plate. So um, prior to doing this transit van, uh, when Caden first started coming up and helping me, I was doing a Mark 1 transit van, which, uh, well, we, we, both of us, we, we restored the van. Um, it's a standard looking van, but in the back, it's got a uh, 500 cubic inch V8. That's 8.2 litre V8 nestled in the back. So it's a bit of a sleeper. Uh, that particular van is, uh, I've put that away for winter, wrapped it up for winter now, but uh, so we, we might not do a video on that one uh, anytime soon. Uh, having said that, if the, if the nice weather continues, we, we might get it out of storage and uh, give it a blast and, and, and show you what that's all about. But um, I digress, the, uh, the the number plate was was put on the van for a music video and the music video was uh, deep purple. Uh, so if you want to have a look at the Mark 1 transit van, uh, go on YouTube, uh, type in Deep Purple Oh Well, uh, that was the, uh, that's, that's the name of the song, so it's Deep Purple and Oh Well, and um, there you can see my Mark 1 transit van that we built. Well, I think that concludes for our video today, um, I've been in and out of shower and got all the uh, blue paint with the transit off my, off my big nose. Um, hope you like the chat about the Model A and uh, learning about what we're doing on the, on the transit van. So we'll keep you in the loop with all those. Well, there's more we can talk about about all the vehicles here. Um, so we'll, we'll, we'll cover them again in, in more videos. Um, so now I think it's time to um, take Kate home. He's missing his mum, he's been crying. <laughs> Sorry mate, he's laughing at me. Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll go out for a, a, a run in the rod, get Caden back, and um, I might stop and have a well-deserved pint in the pub on the way home. <laughs>